hello and welcome to Epiphytic Cacti. Today I figured we would take a look at a bunch of different Daiso cactus hybrid plants. I think that people have been asking me a lot recently, you know, how do they look? Like after one year, two years, three years, four years, you know, how fast do they grow? How big do they get? That's a really complicated question. It's really complicated because of genetics. What it boils down to is that if it is a hybrid that is closer to, I think, a smaller Daiso cactus in lineage, it's probably going to grow a whole lot faster. If you can grow outside year round, your plants are probably going to be bigger. If you have to grow indoors year round, they're probably going to grow a little, a little bit slower. If, you know, you get to split the difference between the two, again, you're probably going to have plants that are a little bit smaller. And pot size plays a huge factor in it too. So this plant right here is Fusai Nakanashi, and I started this plant, it was two years ago, almost two years ago. So this was started from, I believe there's two cuttings, you can see how much it's grown. It's got four branches coming off the one cutting in the front, and if we turn this around, You can see the back cutting didn't really grow quite as well, and that happens. You can see that there's kind of two, three branches there, and you can see that little end. If you basically take those little ends off, because it doesn't really serve much of a purpose, so I'm just going to snap it. If I take that off, what it's going to do is force the aerials to produce growth from lower down on the branch. Some of those, they just don't really serve any purpose, so... If they're not super healthy branches, you might as well just snap them off and, you know, give the energy to the plant where it's got a better time to grow. But there is a really good idea of a plant after about, and this is what is normal. This, this particular plant, I would say after, you know, close to two years, at least for me anyways, this is what normal looks like. That's about how fast they generally grow, but there's still a ton of variation in their growth. This plant right here, I also started right around the same time. This one is Miss America. This is a larger flowering hybrid. It has much larger branches and it definitely is a little bit of a slower grower, even though it maybe kind of doesn't look like it here. So you can see it's got a lot of branches coming out and there's a lot of new growth there. There's also three cuttings this was started from in this spot. And so I would say that this is probably fairly typical for me too. And here we have the hybrid 30 Dreams. And you can see a very marked difference in the amount of growth coming out of this particular plant. Even though it was also started at the exact same time, and I believe there are three cuttings it was started from in there as well. One of the reasons why is because again, this one comes from stock that grows faster. It's genetics. So you can see it's just producing branches and branches and more branches, just kind of branches everywhere coming out of all over the place out of this plant and its branches have branches. So it gives you a really good idea, I think, of just the amount of difference that you're going to have in growth. It, it can really depend on the hybrid. I, you know, if you're, this is going to be a smaller plant though. So even though it has tons of growth like this, the plant itself it doesn't have those great big huge branches, so it, it has a tendency to be a lot more elegant. I have a tendency to really like branches like this. This is a smaller flowering hybrid, although I would argue that the flower on this is not that small. I would say it's more maybe like a medium, medium small. And here we have a few cuttings that I jammed into a pot. I almost lost this poor plant. This is one of these kind of you know, it's got real close lineage to the smaller Daiso cactus blooming hybrids. And so eh, those guys, they can, they can sometimes get so crazy that they just bloom themselves to death. They will bloom and bloom and bloom and bloom and bloom when they shouldn't. And so this is a little bit of a problem with this plant and the bottom of it got all dried out. So all I really did was, you know, chop it off. I just stuck those little cuttings in this pot and then I just kind of stuck it you know, in a nice bright spot under the grow lights in the basement and just kind of treated it like all of the other plants. And there you go. It's just kind of bursting with growth. But again, it gives you the idea of a plant's genetics is going to play a huge factor in just how much growth it might produce. 
I mean, look at all of those little branches coming out of there that, yeah, that's just a little bit bananas. And this hybrid is Abracadabra. And here we have a hybrid that I have that is four years old. Uh, it looks like it's going on to be four years old. I think this, I think I thought this hybrid is a little bit older than it actually is. So this is an example of a hybrid that is just sucks. <laughs> I mean, for me, this hybrid sucks. I think I started it from three different cuttings to, I'm, there may have actually been more than three cuttings in here and they just, all of the cuttings died and actually the, the original cutting died and the only thing that I had was just this like one sad growth that grew and then that started to die. And so I pretty much just busted it off and then it just one day decided, you know, I think I'm gonna grow because she might throw me away if I don't. So voila, then it started growing, but you know, this isn't a good example of what I mean sometimes. Sometimes a hybrid just doesn't wanna grow. And sometimes that's, that's not a hybrid that I want to keep around particularly, but this guy did start to grow. And in all fairness, this is supposed to be Coopermania, I think. And I believe it's a hybrid of two species and I believe it's known for being difficult. So, I mean, I definitely found it to be a little annoying. And you know what? I tried this hybrid twice and the first time all the cuttings just died. I love this plant. This is Fruling's Gold. Now you can see that Fruling's Gold is about, I believe this one is also four years old. This one I got as a small plant and it has just really grown and grown and grown. I've cut it a few times and it just kind of grows and grows and grows. And this is a really neat example of a plant that I don't know can get too much bigger because I believe that it's kind of hit the capacity of the pot to really support the plant. So, you know, I can cut it back and it'll grow new branches and stuff. And I, this is also interesting because this is a hybrid that I have seen other people grow that when they can grow it outdoors year round, it grows very, very long, long branches. For me, it honestly just kind of grows branches about that length and then they, they just kind of stop. But in all fairness, this one was one that was started when I started growing. I was growing indoors. I didn't really have the grow lights during the winter at first. So some of its growth, it just really kind of got stunted from being indoors without ample light and stuff. But it still turned into a beautiful plant regardless. And I mean, just got a beautiful scent. Can't really get much better than this plant. This one, though, it is also a hybrid from... Diso cactus macranthus, which is a smaller flowering species, and that species has never really grown all that well for me. And this one here is also going on four years old. This is Kiwi Fellowship. I, I think this is a really good example of a plant that just doesn't grow all that well. And to be honest with you, this plant has, I believe, every year that I've had it, it has put out a new branch. And most of the kiwi hybrids, I have found that to kind of be the case. They're just have not really been great growers here. However, I'm going to say a couple of things about this. These branches that it's put out, I can cut these branches and then plant those branches back into the same pot and the plant will get bushier and more beautiful. It doesn't really have to look all scraggly and crazy like this. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of thing you'd want to do with a plant that looks like this. You probably don't want to leave it like this. I didn't really want to cut or disturb it or anything because I really wanted it to bloom. And I am noticing that a lot of those kiwi hybrids that I had purchased four years ago, you know, they're trying to bud, they're trying to bloom this year. This looks haggard. It, he just is like stressed out because of his big bloom that he bloomed. And, you know, now he's just tired and he just wants to rest. I'm just going to let him be and treat him pretty much the same as all the other plants. I, you know, I'm not going to give him more water. I'm not going to try to compensate because he looks haggard. I'm just going to kind of let him be and he'll figure it out and he'll come back to looking nice and beautiful. It, it, it's one of those things that 
it takes a little bit of patience to learn, I think. And I, it's disappointing if you overcompensate because I have from experience overcompensated, got real scared when they started looking a little sick and, and then I pretty much killed them. But I've learned since then that, you know, don't overreact, just let it be, let nature do its thing. It'll work out. The other funny thing is, is if you see pictures in the wild, they don't, they don't look beautiful. <laughs> the plants, I mean, they do and they don't. So, you know, we're used to having house plants looking all perfect and gorgeous and everything, you know, because they are never really exposed to any of the elements. Most of those plants in the wild they don't look quite as beautiful as your house plant because they're exposed to the elements and the Daiso cactus. Not, there's not a bunch of hybrids growing out in the wild necessarily, but the Daiso cactus in the wild, they, they, they look spotty, haggard, and a little bit crazy sometimes. Nature works it out and they somehow manage to survive. So this plant here is also going on three years old. This is Ron Crane. And this was a real shocker for how quickly this plant grew. Uh, it, it really, really surprised me. This is one, there's another cutting that's in there that was kind of a sad cutting, but this is an example of an exceptional growing hybrid. This, this hybrid just took off. It grew these big, beautiful branches. And I will say that the other hybrid that really surprised me for this was yellow tang. And they do share a common parent. So they share the common parent of Chiba Lovely Dawn. And Chiba Lovely Dawn, I, I believe, is a hybrid that is known to be very difficult to grow. And I don't necessarily think that it grows slowly. I think it just grows ugly for most people. So surprisingly enough, both Ron Crane and Yellow Tang have flawless branches and very similar branches, very big, long, nice branches. And both of them grew very well like this. So just if you're looking for a yellow hybrid that's going to just grow really well, I would highly suggest those two. And here's an example of one that hasn't grown all that well. This one would be Pink Plumes. I imported this from Germany. I got it from Cactine Hage. The same time that I purchased most of those singular kiwi hybrid cuttings. I think that this is just a hybrid that probably is kind of slow. I, I, I have a few other hybrids that are like that, that are just real, real slow. And this has this weird, like, curly Q branch that's growing here. I don't even quite know what's going on with that crazy branch. But I'm kind of fond of it. You can see how it's just like twirling around the other branch and it's another one where it's put on you know just like one branch per year and a really sad branch per year too so you know it, that's that's just how some of them are it's got a beautiful 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 flower but you know if you're looking for a hybrid that grows super duper extra slow this one might be that for you but at the same time, I will say that there have been times where that has happened. And then I have picked up a cutting, a different cutting, and I've had a different experience. So sometimes, and sometimes it was a cutting even from the same source, and it grew a whole lot better. Here we have an unknown hybrid in my collection. It is a special, very special plant in my collection. It is one hybrid that I picked up as an unknown because I thought it had such a remarkable flower. I do do that sometimes. Every once in a while, there is an unknown hybrid that I think is so beautiful, I just don't care. This was one of those cases. And I'm definitely not sorry because it is an exceptional growing hybrid. It's interesting because it, it really doesn't have the same, it's got like this bush kind of form and it grows these shorter branches these they're wider they're wavy and it just stays in this bush that's just kind of as long as they get when i picked it up i think it's about four years i've had it for about four years when i picked it up it was kind of a small plant it got sunburned the first year that i had it and it, you know so she's been through a few things but she's just incredibly resilient it just keeps growing and growing and growing and just fantastic. And there's one thing about this hybrid that is different than any of the other hybrids that we saw, and that would be that it is in a larger pot. 
So because this hybrid just really wants to just grow hog wild, I just kind of let her grow hog wild. So I just put her, I think that she's in a 10 inch hanging basket where the other hybrids were really in six inch hanging baskets. And you can see that she's definitely made use of her space. If I potted her up into a 12 inch basket, she'd get even bigger. So they can definitely get really big. So if you get a really good hybrid that just really, really wants to grow for you, man, can it ever grow. So I really hope that you've enjoyed looking at these various Daiso cactus hybrids with me and seeing kind of the differences in how some of them grow. Thank you for watching and happy cacti growing.